Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here, and welcome on into a full wave review of LEGO Harry Potter Winter 2024 sets. This is the March 1st batch of sets. Uh, we've got the Brickheads included in this video, we've got the brand new Polybag as well over here, and I just think that it's really interesting to look at this wave all together as a whole. I mean, you've got quite an incredible minifigure lineup here. Tons of new outfits for these characters, which I think is really awesome for Harry Potter going in since 2018. Now we've got all of these sets in 2024. I think that there's a couple good remakes and a lot of new stuff here. So let's go ahead. If you want to hop around to each of the reviews, you can find the chapters linked down below. But let's go ahead. Let's go and look at all these sets 30677 draco in the forbidden forest set has 33 pieces and is retailing for 499 usd or 599 canadian and this was picked up from toys r us here in canada and you can find it wherever poly bags are sold in your country most likely they'll have this and a bunch of other new ones and here it is built I think that it's fine for what it is for sure I mean it's obviously meant to be a connection to the other forbidden four set which we're gonna look at in a second obviously i wish that it came with like the collectible tile that they're doing across all the different sets but maybe next year they'll do that but let's look at this a little closer so yeah here's the environment build and it's pretty cute just small little section here you've got a spot for the owl to hide inside there and then as you continue through here you've got this little leaf and you've got a bunch of cool like colored pieces like the superhero stand pieces in dark blue here you do get two of them and then you've also got the leaf pieces here in purple which is great to be getting in such a cheap set but uh yeah this is it's fine and here is draco malfoy and this is nothing new here for him we've been getting this one for quite a while i mean he even appears in Hagrid's hut from this wave. Uh, the outfit, of course, he's got the Slytherin robes on, which looks great with the back printing there too. And the face, he's had this for since the start, I think since 2018, he's got this angry expression there on the back. And he does have a glow in the dark lantern there as well. You can see it here with the lights off. Here's set number 40677. This is the Prisoner of Azkaban figures. This is a brand new Brickhead set. Has 697 pieces and is retailing for $49.99 USD or $64.99 Canadian. And this is a pretty special set. It does come with five different Brickheads characters. You can see each of their Brickheads numberings uh, down there as well as up here at the top. And you can see just on the back, just different poses there on the stands. But I'm excited couple of new characters here that have never gotten a Brickheads before. So here's the five Brickheads built. And it's interesting to look at them because I'm like, wow, like, first of all, getting some of these characters for the first time is amazing for Brickheads adding to the collection. But then I also look at like, there's like, they're so detailed. And then you've got Hermione here, which is just <laughs> so boring. Like, I, I know myself, other people literally thought that was Lavender Brown. Like it just, it, just it's boring like there's just not much going on but let's go ahead and let's look at each of them individually all right so here is Sirius Black and I think that this is great awesome to be getting for the first time character wise here but even the outfit of course the whole pack is called the Prisoner of Azkaban pack so how could you not get the prisoner which is awesome really love that torso print there that is print not a sticker just how they've done the beard and even the hair here as well looks really really great i'm very impressed and happy to have him in the collection here's hermione granger and like i said up top it just does not like scream at all uh hermione to me i, I think some of the hair detailing is very interesting with those pieces being used do have the time turner there around the neck and the cast piece that's kind of cool like, I'm not sure if we've ever actually had that before for a Brickhead. So, yeah, that's neat. Also, just realizing as well, you've got the hood there underneath there, too. And here is Harry Potter. And this is pretty cool. I feel like this outfit is one that we get a lot for, like, Lego Harry Potter sets. So, to get it in Brickhead's form, like, it's kind of cool. Like, we've got the little stripe there for the arms, as well as the torso's got some mud printing there. You've got his scar there on that 1x4 tile. And the use of the glasses using those ring pieces, it's interesting. It's sad that they just didn't keep the glasses piece around that they introduced for Brickheads. But this is cool. This is actually a new wand piece from the uh, last year's wave of summer sets. And it allows you to actually like attach dishes and different things to the front. So you can do different spells, specifically here, the Patronus spell. 
each of the characters, the last three that you saw, they all have obviously the Brickheads plate. And this one actually has for Harry this little chocolate bar on the bottom. And you can see that we've got the Brickheads head face there as well inside. Now the Patronus has a bit of a different plate there, you can see. And we got to zoom out here to see, but this is probably one of the tallest Brickheads we've gotten. Um, looks really great though, like just the detail here, the colors, I think is just incredible here, all the color choices that they've done. I mean, just looking at like all the different transparent pieces there and even like the foggy ones up top, like that is just amazing. I really love uh, the tail bits here in the back. Even got a little bit of aqua there. So I actually didn't realize two things about the eyes. Number one, that they're printed. Didn't know that there was white eye printing on that until right now. Also, they are glow in the dark, which I had absolutely zero clue about. And I've recorded way too much footage to go back <laughs> and film that with them properly rotated but that's really cool and then the antlers here too i think like that's just they look amazing incredible design here for this brickheads so the dementor also has a bit of a special plate design here and you just attach it like that and i'll put it on the stand again this is just such a cool looking brickheads here like just how they've done the cloak and having the different heights for that is just amazing i love even like the tatter on each side like this look at this side here and i'll spin it around here to the other side it's a little bit different which is cool i love the claws but the mouth is so so darn cool how they have accomplished that i love also the rib cage there that's great and just how it goes on down onto that piece to attach the stand this is one of the coolest brickheads i think we've ever gotten well you have it that is my review of these five brickheads i think that they are excellent additions here for the most part for the harry potter brickheads collection you can see where i've put them here hopefully in the right spot again my friend swift bricks helped me figure out like the different quidditch robes and what movies or what time frame they're supposed to be in so hopefully this is all slotted perfectly I, I like to put it in chronological order for things like this and star wars but anyways back to these i think again really great bad good fantastic like really some of the best looking brickheads i think that we've ever had personally but what do you think of these five comment down below which one's your favorite which one well i already know which one's your least favorite <laughs> Set number 76424. This is the Flying Ford Anglia. This is retailing for $14.99 USD or $19.99 Canadian. And uh, this is a pretty exciting set, I think, for some people because it's just the car on its own. It's not buy a train, buy the Whomping Willow, buy all these big sets. It's just this car on its own. And it looks very detailed, similar to like you would expect for Speed Champion. So I'm actually excited to take a look and build this thing up. There's a couple new pieces that haven't appeared in any other set. So anyways, let's go ahead. Let's open this up. So it is actually very interesting. This set does have paper bags included. So I did say that I want to mention that at least for a bunch of different themes. So I think that's very cool that harry potter is starting to get that again this is from europe so it's a little bit different but uh, you'll notice as well sometimes they've got little paper smaller bags but there are still other instances with the paper bags that have had actual plastic ones all right so taking a closer look here at the car i think it's a very detailed model of it i i think like i i do look at this and like other people are saying it does feel very much like a speed champion sort of you know, one-off, very detailed model of the car. I think it's going to excite a lot of people, like we've talked about before, that you can just get this on its own. I think it's very impressive just how they've done some of the different things here. Like, this white stripe going across looks really great. I think, obviously, the printing on the car door could have been a little bit better there so that it's a little bit more bright but of course the car doors are actually able to open on up on both sides and uh, the front of the car has a sticker there would have been nice if all this was printed but uh, the car hood is cool i do like how they've done the mirrors it does drive very smoothly as well with these wheels and then coming around here to the back we've got uh, this cool sticker there as well on that piece and some nice headlights with uh, the angles and everything it looks great this new piece here i'm just going to detach one of them to show you it is actually a new slope piece which is great it doesn't have like those vents we've gotten it's similar size and shaping there but no none of the grills so that's going to be really great in the future just getting in a ton of new colors 
this new longer cheese slope piece. But there's actually a couple of different functions to the set besides the car doors opening. Uh, to get access to the inside, you just lift this up. And honestly, I have done this about five or six times off camera. And every single time, this has stayed together. It feels like it shouldn't. But it can, and I think that's very impressive. It also doesn't mess up any of this. I will say you just got to make sure that it's lined up to the front part there for the window. But yeah, that's very impressive. I think that's great. There's a quite a lot of room, I would say, on the inside here for you to put different things in the back. You can see there there's another sticker for like the radio and different things there. And then that's the steering wheel, which I think is a very interesting choice uh, for that. So anyways, let's go ahead and let's, because this is a five stud wide car you are able to fit uh, the two figures inside very easily there which i think is great again very speed champions-esque because of the size of that and because you're able to do that you do have to lift up their arms just to fit inside there because of the windscreen and also the door piece but you can also take hedwig there and put her in the back there too, which I think looks pretty great. And look at this, you can close it on up and still everyone fits inside and uh, then you can just fly on off. In the back, the trunk does actually open and look at how that like fits right inside there. That is really great. It's also all sort of covered up. There's no stud showing there, which I think looks really nice. But what you got to do is in order for this to actually work, you need to take scabbers and put scabbers in first and then the luggage. If you do it the other way or any other way, it will not close the back trunk. It will not work. Here is Harry Potter here. And this is really interesting. We've actually been getting this torso since 2018, which I think is pretty crazy to think about. Uh, just this outfit. The legs were a little different back then, but uh, the face here and you've got this scared expression there on the back and the smirk. And then you've got, uh, like, it's a very detailed torso, don't get me wrong. It's just, uh, it's also been a little bit rare, I would say. And now this is going to be the easiest way to get it. But uh, yeah, you got a luggage there like we showed before. And their wands are included as well. Here's Ron Weasley. Again, same outfit, but uh, it looks great. I, I think this is, uh, you know, I it's fine. They're very detailed torsos. You get the same face that we've been getting for all these years as well with this scared expression on the other side. And again, his wand. Here is Hedwig. Again, same piece since 2018, which is fine. But uh, yeah, great to get here. Could have maybe had a cage. Would have been cool, but not sure how that would have fit inside. And here is Scabbers. I think in another set I talked about how they didn't have the tuft little printing on the top of the head. And it wasn't Scabbers, but I guess it was maybe. So yeah, interesting that they removed that. But here he is. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my review of the Flying Ford Anglia. I think that, again, this is, as I've been saying throughout this, it's a very detailed model. I think that it is it is on par with like Speed Champions. And it's going to interest a lot of people just to go get this car instead of having to buy it and like a hundred dollar plus thing getting it on its own is great i think the figures and the animals here are fitting for the scene and they're also you know not too common in terms of the prices that they come in so i think this is a good set for that i, I just want to say the only things that i would maybe include could have been you know a similar design and including the pieces that they did in rivendell to have a brick built version of the short leg sitting would have been nice to see inside of the car although you can't really see them when they are sitting inside but uh, yeah, what do you think of this set? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Comment them down below. If you want to check out a comparison video of every single Flying Ford Anglia we've ever gotten, my friend Swift Bricks just did a video looking at this one and all the other past ones from even the early days. So if you want to check that out, I'll link that at the end. 76425. This is the Hedwig at 4 Privet Drive. This is retailing for $19.99 USD or $24.99 Canadian. And I was able to pick this up here early in Canada, but it will be releasing on March the 1st. But yeah, uh, I'm not too excited about this set. This is definitely my least favorite of the wave, even before building this. I am surprised by the price of this and the size of this box. Like, but let's go ahead. Let's build this up. Like, look at this. There's six bags. I'm I, not that they're large bags, but still very surprising. Anyways, I had to add this in here. All right, so here's everything all built up. Let's go through. If you want to hop around to the different chapters and sections to check out the different builds, you can do that. I figured we should start with this since, you know, it's the name of the set. It's pretty cute. Like I will say, it's a pretty adorable little build here for Hedwig. This is sort of a miniaturized version, I would say, of the Hogwarts Icons collection set. So this is a small little Hedwig. It's pretty adorable. Like, I think my favorite part is the, the face. 
with the little beak, the eyes, those are actually printed pieces there. They look pretty great. And just how they've done like the shaping and everything for this. I think it is quite impressive there for the top part of the head and over here in the back like the little uh, tooth pieces there claw pieces being used for like feathers i think that works really well but uh even the chest that's cool that is a sticker not a print unfortunately but like that rock piece there works pretty well for like a feather effect and then you've got the wings that of course can flap and move around and then every little individual uh sort of part of the wings can move there too you can also angle those black bar pieces as well so there's quite a lot of articulation that you've got going on there for the wings here's what the back looks like you do have a couple of little black tiles there sort of adding to that i think that looks pretty nice and then down here you do have the tail that can also uh, move up and down there as well you could even i guess angle those pieces there too that looks pretty great and then uh, down below you could see how the bottom part is built you've got uh, like claws the talons they're actually sort of hanging over and attach the sign which is pretty cool and it's very easy to detach this entire build and snap it back on the way that that's attached is just by attaching into the center bits there of the feet so looking at this small little sign i think it looks nice again all stickered out here with privet and drive i like the little flowers and the whole little ground part here it's a it's a very simple but cute an effective design for the sign and then here is this chest this large trunk looks really cool i love the design of this with these parts here elevated just a little bit little handles on the side uh, that's what it looks like from underneath but you even got this little lock that you can sort of move it doesn't actually lock it but you can you know move it if you want and then it opens on up and there's a bunch of stuff inside you can see here this first object is a wand box and when you lift it on up you could see on the inside is supposed to be Harry's little wand. So it's a small little build for that. And then you just close that back on up. I guess you could even have it on an angle sort of open like that if you want to as well. But there's some more stuff like this. This is a pretty cool sticker here. It is a history of magic book. And that's what that looks like on this big piece there. And lastly, inside of the trunk, we've got this two by three tile. It's a sticker of a picture of james and lily potter holding little baby harry there that's pretty cute that's going to be useful for even non you know s sets at this scale that could be for a minifigure hang that up somewhere but uh yeah this is what the inside of the trunk looks like it's very large so you just uh, again just to on to do it in reverse order just to show you how you put it all together because this i think has to be in the front section it fits just perfectly inside of the front because you have to leave ample room for those hinges there in the back then you close it on up and you can lock it back up also didn't say this but you've got the hogwarts logo there on the front again another sticker well there you have it everyone that is my review of the hedwig at four privet drive set still my least favorite set of the wave but i think it is a lot of fun for what you're getting like i don't really care for sets that don't necessarily have a minifigure in them and this just doesn't interest me i don't think i would have picked this up if i wasn't already getting every single harry potter set this is not a set that really speaks to me however i do see the appeal i, I can see this being a perfect gift for someone who likes harry potter like that isn't necessarily a lego fan and it's like here try this try this small little cute build like it, it's a substantial build i think for what for the cost of the set that you're getting here like i showed before definitely some more pieces could have been printed 76426 this is the hogwarts castle boathouse retailing for 37.99 usd or 49.99 canadian i'm so excited to have this this was the set that i was really looking forward to with this wave it is a first for lego harry potter i'm so excited to have a set fully dedicated to the boathouse this is super super exciting you got a ton of mini vigors inside of this set and uh, you're gonna see here uh just some of the play features and different things but there is a new way to connect this uh, as well as there's one of the collectible portraits included in here as well so anyways let's go ahead let's take a closer look at this set so I gotta say, it's a lot smaller, I think, than I was expecting. However, it is very detailed. Like, it's a lot more detailed than I was expecting, which goes in line with what it says on the side of the box, that this is gonna be a part of the most detailed Hogwarts castle that we've gotten yet. And here's the boathouse, and just looking at the sort of shaping of it, the roof color, the rock face, the water, 
all that. I think this is going to give you a good idea of what to expect with the future Hogwarts expansions that we're going to be getting starting in the summer to go alongside these. All right, so I want to start with the entrance. I love this a lot. I love the candles there. That looks great with sort of the torches on an angle. I think that looks nice. You've got a couple little windows here and there. And even just the slope piece here, the arch that that makes up above. But this plate here is so great, that flat plate. I like the, the masonry bricks being used here. And the little bits of uh, the nougat, medium nougat throughout that looks nice the leaves and different things you've got to, again this tree out front using the rivendale pieces which looks pretty great i'm going to remove that just so you could see you've got a spider climbing up the wall there as well as some two different types of mushrooms there and then the water and the rocks again giving you a good idea of what to expect color scheme wise looks really great and uh the grass as well but this specifically this little fish jumping out of the water i think that's a fun little addition here for the set anyways though, let's talk about this we keep talking about the hogwarts uh you know expansions and different things well this is a new system you can see there's no holes here in the back for you to connect it to any of the past ones this is a brand new thing and these little clips are rumored to be able to connect to the uh, great hall that's coming in the summer so that's pretty exciting we'll come back to the inside in a bit but yeah over here you've got again that archway which looks really nice and then you've also got uh this little leaf there on the side i just want to see i don't think she can unfortunately mcgonagall cannot actually fit through the door which is a shame i think i don't know why some of these hogwarts sets have been really small like if you watch the owlry You'll see I said the same thing there. So I don't know what's going on there. That's a little concerning. But you do have a crab down below. And then over here you have Hedwig sitting on uh, this rail, which I guess you could pretend is also maybe a bench or something if you want to have figures sitting there. But yeah, you've got some little flat pieces there. Not entirely sure why they chose to do that. Uh, but anyways, underneath there is this. Pulling on this sand green piece here opens up this little secret compartment which has here neville's frog which is so cool to be getting in this color i'm i at least i don't think i have this frog in this color so that's pretty cool and uh, it's on this little clip which you just slide inside to attach to that piece there very easy to do just boom and it just is very easy to detach and reattach there i think it's important to look at the boats here because this is going to tie into this next part you've got the boats that uh, are able to fit a couple of different figures here and i love the design for the lamps in the front that looks great with that hot dog piece in black and these are the exact same builds but you are able to take all of the students and you can fit them inside the boats, which looks really nice there. I, I don't know, just the idea that they have these two boats, they've got four students, I think is really great for the set. And again, ample room there for each of them. And you could even have them lying down, I guess, if you want to as well, taking a nap inside the boat. But this does lead me to looking at the inside here. I love all the little wooden log pieces there, sort of holding up the, uh, the parts there for the boathouse, like from the water looks great. But anyways, the idea is that you could take the boats and just slide them on inside for the students to, you know, obviously arrive at Hogwarts, which I think is so cool that they included that. It's it's obviously that size and, and because of to, to fit the boats really, uh, I guess, snugly is, is a better word to, to use there to describe that. But what I love and I didn't realize as I'm building this, I'm like, what the heck is this? This is a weird little detail. These little horn pieces here, they're specifically here for you to put the two oars included uh onto them and have them hanging there for you to then uh leave so that is so cool i did not realize that's what it was while building here is the roof again we're back to dark gray which i think is the preferred color for most people when it comes to this um you can't remove the roof or anything but you can unfold them and i did that just to shine light inside it doesn't really help you get access to the inside like you're able to do that pretty well through the openings and different things uh for the boats but yeah i think that's uh it's a nice roof design and i like the little bits of leaves here with the dark greens that looks nice and just again the sloping in the arch up here uh this I guess interior it's really small but what you do is you pull on this little bit here 
So here is Godric Gryffindor's portrait. This is actually one of 14 different portraits that you are collecting across this new batch of Harry Potter sets. You can see here in the checklist on the back of the instructions. I, I love this. I think this is great. I love the Nexonite shield prints here. And uh, yeah, I think that just overall, I'm glad that we have something new to collect. And you could also display it this way if you wanted to as well. You just can't really grab onto anything to remove it, but that's how like the back of the box has it displayed, but it's very easy to tip out just to remove. So I think up here at the top of the roof, this is supposed to be a wind vane. So you could sort of angle it and turn it different ways, uh, depending which way you want the wind to be blowing. So yeah, it's, it's nice. You've even got a little bit of sand green. So they're combining the dark gray and the sand green roofs here. Here's Professor McGonagall. And I'm gonna go out and say that this is the best Professor McGonagall figure we have ever gotten. I had no clue, again, cause a lot of times with Harry Potter, we look at blurry images. That's how they're revealed first. This figure has printing on the arm. That looks so cool. And they also redesigned the torso and the dress. Like this isn't a reuse and they just went, yeah, let's give her arms. No, they redid the whole thing. I was looking at the pattern, studying, studying it. So I made sure that it was new. This looks so cool here on the back, the back torso and the back dress printing. Again, they didn't have to do back dress printing, but they did. This is an incredible figure as well as the accessory of this two by three tile here with all the students arriving, their names, all the, the students in the set. That is so, so great. You even got a wand, of course, for her. And then this uh, dual molded hair piece there with the hat. She's got this smile on one side and then this sort of iconic McGonagall expression on the other. But this is just a phenomenal figure. The best we've gotten. Let's go in order of uh, that list, shall we? We've got Hermione Granger here, which looks great. Uh, I really love this outfit that they've been doing recently with the skirt like that. Just works so well from Trolls in black. And then underneath you've got uh, here this triple molded leg there in dark gray and black that looks amazing. And uh, unfortunately, this figure doesn't have the new Hermione face. If you're hoping to get that here in the set, this is the one that we've had for a while here. She's got this scared expression on the other side, uh, but this torso, it's before they're sorted. So it's just a generic one and it's shared between each four of the students here in the set. Here is Neville Longbottom and he looks really great. This is actually a brand new Neville. He's got a new face which looks awesome. I love the little expression there, how one eye sort of closed as he's smiling. You could see here on the other side, his, his large teeth just sticking out there in this sort of surprised or generic expression there for him. I love that he got a new face. Here's Dean Thomas, and I'm happy that we're getting him in a set. However, it's strange to me. So the face is actually the one that they use for Lee Jordan in the summer. And it's the same skin color, all that. You could see removing T'Challa's hair piece there on the other side, there's this sort of sad expression. But the fact that it's using the same face, it's the same year, it's just weird. It doesn't make sense to me. I wish that he had a new face and that it would have matched like the skin color that we've been getting for him too. Also the fact that like they're using the same face for the two black kids from the same year, from the same house. I don't think this works. And last but certainly not least, we have here Harry Potter and this figure, nothing new here at all. Again, all re reuses here for the torso, the face, all that. He's got this scared expression on the other side. I think I have it, everyone. That is my review of the Hogwarts Castle Boathouse. I think that I'm a little bit torn. On one hand, I'm like, wow, look at this new McGonagall. And the other four figures, they're great inclusions. Nothing too new going on with them besides Neville but I like that we've got four figures to actually fill up the boats and then the boat system going into the boathouse and all that and the oars. I'm impressed by that and all the little hidden details. I think it's just very small. I don't know why. Why is this so small? Just like the Owlry. The door frames are not to like regular minifigure proportions. I'm confused by this. I, I don't follow the logic and thinking behind that. Just make them a little bit taller, a little bit wider. But regardless, I'm very excited to see how this is going to connect to this Hogwarts castle that they are hyping up. So I can't wait to see that in the summer. 76428. This is the Hagrid's Hut, an unexpected visit. This is going to be retailing for $74.99 USD or $99.99 Canadian. I'm actually very excited about this. If you look at the name, it says Hagrid's Hut colon. So 
couple times with Harry Potter, when they do that, they are, you know, it's sort of an ongoing thing. The Dark Forest, Hogwarts Castle. So I am intrigued by that. I wonder if that's going to, you know, mean anything else. If they're going to do anything else for that Hagrid's Hut farm or something. I, I don't know. Animal Pen. But beyond that, I think it's time for a remake. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, look at all the figures and different things. We're going to talk about that. But there, a ton of them are all brand new. And uh, this is what the back looks like. Just showing off some of the play features and different things. So I'm excited to show you all that. There are two collectible portraits inside of here. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's take a closer look. All right. So I want to start with the main hut building because it's just so impressive. I think that's something that a lot of people might not realize is that it's actually a fully enclosed 360 degree model. I think that's so impressive. I think that this really stands out against the other Hagrid huts that we've gotten, but specifically the only one since 2018 that we got, that one was based off the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is based off of the Sorcerer's Stone or the Philosopher's Stone. And the design of it is actually different because the other one had, you know, there was that other section. So it had two roofs. The one from this film actually only has the main building and then the small little spot to the side. So this is actually quite accurate. And like I said before, I think it is the better model, but it's sort of based off of two different things. Also, something that I said was it was Hagrid's Hut colon, which I... I didn't even realize when I said that, but just like the Dark Forest set, which we know there's a polybag expansion coming to it, you can have these side little builds. So you've got this stump for Draco to stand on, which I'll show you in a second. And then you've also got these this little pumpkin patch. So I'm thinking maybe they could do the expansion for the Prisoner of Azkaban and you could like attach it there. I don't know, but just the interiors wouldn't be able to connect. What I don't understand is you'll notice where you had the log and then you can have Draco standing on it, but he's not looking into anything. He's supposed to be able to spy inside, right? But realistically, it should be over here on this side so that you could take Draco and have him looking through the window. Uh, that is the only window other than here in the back. So I guess you could put the stump over here and just detach it loosely. But I just think that's interesting to note that that sort of, uh, you know, you can switch and swap them around if you want. So here's the exterior. I just want to show you it in detail. I love the door trim. My OCD is really bothering me with having those two studs next to each other. Not sure how you fix that, but I do love all the different ingots throughout this thing. It looks nice. Of course, you do have the door that can open and close so you can get an, an access to it that way. And then you've also got a bunch of leaves around here on the floor. This is actually the new orange color you can see here. If I bring the pumpkins back, you could see just the different shade that that is there. So I think that looks really cool there, as well as just the steps going up. You've got some mushrooms growing. Again, the different ingots and the window there, the colors. This looks very Minecrafty. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. I think maybe this could have used a little bit of detail there uh, or just thinking that through a bit more. It is on a hinge. That's why there's no ingots or, you know, leaves and different things on that wall specifically. But as you go through here, you could see you've got some more ingots, some more uh, flat studs showing. So um, you can keep on going through. Again, same thing over here. This part opens up so they can't put anything on that wall. But I do like the other window over here. And let's take a look at the roof now. The use of these little pieces here, these foamy, I don't know, bendy pieces. I don't know how else to call them that, but that's cool from Star Wars being used here. I think that's where they first came from. And just filling in that gap for the roof. That's just incredible. I love all the moss and the different leaves up here. I think that looks great. And specifically the chimney using this monkey kid piece as well works really well. So all you got to do, it's, it's very easy to do. You just simply lift up the roof and hold on to it and you just take it on off. So I just want to show you it from this angle. You can see the underneath part here. And all you got to do is you line up the reddish brown lines there with the dark orange bits and this little gap. So you take it and make sure that it is fully centered. See, just like that. You push down and then maybe just some of the different parts of the roof need to be readjusted a little bit and pushed back down. But that is how you do that. All right, this is the last time I show you how to remove the roof, I promise. I just want to show you an aerial view here just so you can see all the gaps and different things and how well it actually covers 
the bottom part. But when you lift it up, you get access to the inside here and it looks great from above. Like this fully enclosed model is great. Like look at all that the space you've got there to place figures. It's a complete set. But then all you got to do is you just pull on this part here and you can open it on up. All right, so just to show you here, you just, again, pull on the walls and it'll pop off. It attaches to those two studs there and this slides into the other section. So that is really well thought out and built. Really appreciate that. And then you've got uh, sort of four sections, I guess, to the house. You could even open it further if you don't have the pumpkin and the log attached to it but uh, you don't really need to do that. So we're gonna start here, go left to right. This is a little cute spot next to the fireplace. It's so cozy, I really like it. You do have a seat on top of a little bit of a carpet build there. And obviously the seat is not for Hagrid. Don't worry, he does have one here in the set, but I wanna draw your attention over here. You've got uh, a couple of keys being hung up there because Hagrid is the keeper of the keys. You've got an ax there, I guess, for chopping wood. And then over here, you've got a fireplace, which is a really cool sticker on the inside of the windowsills piece there. The use of all these like window frames and different things, it really adds depth to the set. So that looks so great. You've got a little bit of a pink mug up there at the top, but this is one of my favorite little details. There are these oven mitt prints, which are so cool. I'm so impressed by that. And you can put them in Hagrid's hand there to pretend like they're actually being used. I love that. That is so, so cool. But of course, I didn't talk about this. This here, this portrait, this Nexo Knight shield piece is the new collectible for these new waves of Harry Potter sets. And this one here specifically is Basil Fronsack. Basil, Basil, however you want to say it. I, I really love the idea of these. There's actually 14 of these to collect. You can see them here in the instructions and advertisement for them all. Uh, there are two in this set. I did get two different ones, uh, thankfully, which you'll see where the other one is in a second, but uh, I, I'm not sure if you can get repeats. We'll have to wait and see. But here onto the main entrance way, you can see what that looks like when you open the door from this side. You've got two candles there on both sides, as well as this little chair, which I think is so cool. It's specifically designed for Hagrid to actually lie down and, and sit in. That is amazing how they've done that. Like the fact that they went and thought, okay, let's have him actually have furniture in his house that he could use, I think is so, so cool. You can see there's also some carpet underneath there again they're really making such good use of the space inside of here like this little cupboard with some flowers some pots and different things you can see that that's pretending to be like the drawers you've got this barrel there that has his umbrella for when he's leaving as well as a little spot for his mug and when that's closed here you can see that the two dark red uh pieces actually sort of make like a sort of unit that's attached to the wall. I think that looks cool, but continuing through, we've got some beets, I think, up there, as well as some yarn. You do have this seat here for, again, someone else to sit at the table. And this little shell piece is supposed to be the egg that Norbert hatches from. So you could attach Norbert there. Don't worry, we'll take a closer look at that incredible new piece in a second. But uh, if you want to remove that, you've just got a regular table there. And it's very easy to detach all of the different furniture there. I left the leg behind, but that's okay. But this is where the final portrait is. I'm not sure why it's hidden inside here, but this is the one that I got. And it is of Helga Hufflepuff, which is great. I'm a Hufflepuff, so I'm so glad that I have the founder there. And you can see she's holding on to the cup. It just loosely sits inside of the cabinet there. And here is the other small side build. It's, I, I, it sort of acts like a doghouse here for Fang. Uh, the top is not removable like the other one, but you do have the giant entrance way there. And just to shine a light on the inside, you can see there's just, you know, a bunch of reddish brown pieces and some dark orange inside. Nothing too special going on there. And then you just take Fang and you put him on inside there. And it's a cute little doghouse. All right, so we have to start with Hagrid. I really love this figure. It's so detailed. I really love the fact that we're just getting a new outfit for him. The uh, beard, of course, is removable. And you could see the apron there looks 
great that he's got on. It's tied around his waist and the printing there on the back, even a little bit up at the top. It looks awesome. I love the dark red arms. The face is the same that we've been getting for Hagrid. And here is Harry Potter. This is a brand new outfit for him. It looks awesome. This really cool green sweater. It's just such a fun variant for him that we've never gotten. I think it looks great. You can see it's just a regular hairy face that we've gotten and this shocked or scared expression on the back. And here is Ron. Again, new outfit. You can see how it's it looks so scratchy and itchy with some of the printing there. That is such a cool little detail. And you can see the back printing there as well. Again, same Ron face with those giant pupils that we've been getting for a while here and spinning it around. There's a shocked and scared expression there too. And here is Hermione Granger in a new outfit as well. Uh, this face, I believe, is the new one uh, from the summer of 2023. You've got this smile and then this sort of shocked, disgusted look. I don't know how else to describe that. And last up here, we have Draco Malfoy in his Slytherin robes. Nothing new for him, but uh, that's fine. It is accurate to the scene. You can see the other expression. He's got this angry face on the other side. And here we have Fang. This new piece is amazing. I think it looks so great. And you've got a really nice printed face there on the front, a stud on the top, and this is what it looks like underneath. Just to show you a sense of scale next to Harry there, just how big Fang is to a minifigure. And here is Norbert. This is such a cool piece that they have created here. I love uh, the wings, the tail, and the legs as well, how they look like they're together, but the little face is pretty adorable. And just to show you from up above there as well. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my review of Hagrid's Hut and Unexpected Visit. I really love this thing. Again, I don't have a problem with there being a remake of this. It's not even based off of the same hut design or movie, so I don't have a problem with that at all. I love all of the new figures and animals that you're getting here in this set, but for me, just the fact that it is a fully enclosed model just really makes this stand out, I think, amongst a lot of different sets. 76429, this is the Talking Sorting Hat set. This is gonna be retailing for 99.99 USD or 129.99 Canadian. It sounds like a lot for sure for what you are getting. I think it might be a bit off-putting, but it is groundbreaking and revolutionary um, because you can see if I turn this thing around on the back, this again, if you can tell from the title, it has 31 different sound combinations. That's right. This set actually can talk and I'm so excited to show off that feature and that's what we're going to get started with first is showing you that brick that lets this thing talk so here it is here's what all the fuss is about this new brick and it's so cool i oh my goodness just watch and listen ah yes you belong in gryffindor better be gryffindor There you go, that's that's me. I'm a Hufflepuff. Just listening to a couple ah, of them. Yes, Gryffindor. It sounds like it's just a bunch of combinations of different versions. Gryffindor. Like he'll just say the house or he'll say hmm or he'll just say, you know, the different lines. There's nothing hidden in your head the sorting hat can't see. So try me on and I will tell you where you ought to be. So that one's a bit different. That's cool. So here it is all built up. And I think that the shaping of this and some of the brick pieces used for this is just like so smart. I love the shaping of this, the colors as well, just some of the details in this. But uh, obviously you want to see in here, it talks. So let's do that. Just pull down on the t tip of the hat. And what's cool about it is if you don't push down all the way, you definitely feel when it does activate the brick inside. But uh, you can see just jiggling this, it'll actually move the mouth. So when you pull down, you can sort of puppeteer it. Ah, yes, Gryffindor. Which I think is a lot of fun. It's very easy to detach from the base and also reattach. You just gotta line that up properly and drop it on in. 
So I don't know how I did that disappearing trick with the gold trim there. Uh, that was interesting. But uh, yeah, it, it is easy to put on and off. But this is the stand and you can spin it around and decide which house you want to actually have facing you. What I think is really cool is that these are all actually prints. These aren't stickers, which is such a nice little detail. Most of the actual detailed pieces in the set are all printed, which I think sort of helps justify that price a little bit. On the inside of this build, there are four colored bricks. Look at that, got these fun little colors inside. So there's actually two ways of sorting yourself and having him speak, of course, pushing down, but also underneath. And this is what the under bit looks like. You can see a bunch of the interior as well as the sound brick. You could, I don't know if you could see that there with those lines. That's how the sound is being amplified. It shoots out the bottom. But uh, inside here, you could see in the center, when you push down on that, it actually moves it as well, which means that you can sort people from actually putting this onto their head. So, gonna need some assistance here. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to Bella. <laughs> yes, my dog, she is actually 15 years old and she's gonna be my uh, unwilling assistant. She is uh, getting some treats, uh, which she is actually more interested in than the hat. Sorry, George. Eventually I got her to sit down and she was calmer when I ran out of treats and she was just sitting there. So he here she is getting sorted. But here's the hat on its own. And again, just giving it a bit of a, tw a twirl around here, you could see like some of the part usage, this piece here, like a rock piece being used for the shaping and wrinkles of the hat is so, so smart. I love this trim around the whole bottom there. Now you've sort of got like the tassels in the back, but in order to get to the sound brick, it's very easy. You just pull down on this bit here. You just sort of pull down on the brick and it's pretty easy to remove and just sort of remove it and play around with it and then to attach it back it's just just like that really easy so yeah the mechanisms for this is really cool i want to show you it and there's a hidden little reference inside here when you pull this apart what is all that well inside of the head there are four items and those four items represent each of the houses. We have the Sword of Gryffindor, the Hufflepuff Cup, the Ravenclaw Diadem, and then the Slytherin Locket. Now that the whole thing is open and exposed, I wanna show you this in action and how it actually works. It's really simple. You, again, push down on this, and what that does is it lifts up this whole mechanism, and the little stamp piece pushes into the sound brick. And when it lifts up, of course, that's what's lifting and moving the mechanisms for the mouth and the eyes. And then if you push far enough down, you get a sound. There's a few more really cool details here down below, like this sticker here that is not printed, but I think it makes sense because it is a really large piece. I'm not sure if they've ever actually printed on those large pieces. And same with this over here. This is another sticker that you get, and it's just cool little details, stitches and scratches. But this piece over here, this curved piece appears twice, of course, next to each other. That is a printed piece, which is just a really cool detail here. But I love all the little dark, brown pieces throughout this, as well as the actual tip of this, we we didn't say what that was. This is actually one of the horn pieces from Ninjago, and they've taken a little stamp piece and you just attach it there, and that that's really cool. I never thought of that, and again, that's how the whole thing moves. Like it's nice that it's actually blacked out the mouth there, and it's not like you could see any of the gears. The eyes, I feel like, maybe could have been a little bit more concave and a bit of a dent in there, but uh, one of the things that I like is that you when you're building it, they have you actually put these two pieces, you build them the exact same way, but instead of putting them the same direction, you flip one of them on one side so that it just sort of creates an unevenness to the face. There is actually a minifigure included in the set and you get a minifigure scale version of the sorting hat as well as an exclusive Harry. So while the hat, this molded piece is really cool from 2018, we have a new Harry. The torso is not new. It's a version of the students before they're sorted, but it's the face. You could see he's closing his eyes, trying to will the sorting hat. And then you could see when he gets sorted into the Gryffindor, he gets really excited there and he's happy about that. And as is tradition with 18 plus sets, we have to look at the instructions here. And you can see when we open this up, here, here's George, who I was just talking about here. You can see he's putting the hat on. He's got some Hogwarts robes on. And if you want to pause 
and read a little blurb about him talking about the set. You could also read about uh, the history of the sorting hat here and a little bit about the first ever Lego sorting hat down below. You can see this picture of Draco being sorted there. Anyways, everyone, that is my review of the talking sorting hat. I, I think it's crazy to look back at like when we first heard about this, I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. It'll be a nice display piece, go with the other helmets. But then when we see this thing in action, we hear it talking, we see it moving, and it just has blown me away. I think it's really crazy. I know obviously the price is a lot for people to swallow. And I think that this will interest just general Harry Potter fans that'll just buy it like that without even thinking twice about the price. But I do actually want to compare it to something. Looking at the latest Spider-Man mask, the Spider-Man helmet actually is $70. This is $100. This does have a minifigure, which I also think is important to make note of. It's exclusive to the set. You also have a ton of prints. Both sets do. A couple stickers for both of them as well. This has about 100 more pieces. So if you look at it that way, $30 more than that set, which is also overpriced in its own right. And with the new revolutionary sound brick, I can see how we've wound up at this price. But I have no doubt that it'll go on sale eventually. But I want to hear your thoughts. Like, I look around my room and I see Bowser. I see Batmobiles, Star Wars ships, the other helmets, other vehicles. I look at the Pac-Man set and imagine every time you move the joystick, it made a sound. Like, there's so much potential for the sound brick. I want to hear your thoughts, your ideas of where you want to see this appear in a set next. 76430. This is the Hogwarts Castle Owlry. This is retailing for $44.99 USD or $59.99 Canadian. And this is going to be available beginning on March the 1st, but was sent to me early by Lego and Land to do a review for. I'm very excited to take a look at this set. This is a first for the theme, this location. I'm so excited with all of these figures and different owls and everything to take a look at that. And as well, we've got uh, here, you can see there's one of the new collectible tiles in here. So I'm excited to see who I get for that. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's take a closer look at the set. All right, so here's the tower all built up and it's a lot taller than I thought, like, this is really cool. I'm, I'm impressed by just everything that's going on inside here as you go through the different levels and layers to this thing. There's quite a lot of different hidden things here, which I'm really excited to show you. I want to show you my favorite thing that I didn't know was here. When you're building, when you're done the very first bag, I, I looked at this thing. I'm like, what am I building right now? And as you tip it up, you could see it actually creates a owl. You can see the wings, you can see the ears, the eyes, and the the talons on the bottom. And you can see it's just hidden in behind this rail here. So that's a really fun little detail. But now every time that I see this and I notice the little pieces in the back, I'm going to remember that fun little Easter egg. Anyways, though, coming back to the front, you can see they've got some of the new Rivendell fern pieces being used to create this tree here. And I'm just going to point this out just, uh, just for you to think about. I know that obviously the scene takes place in the winter. There's all the snow and different things. But as you see, as you go through here, I, I just throw this out there, you know, because, of course, uh, you know, Filch here, he's he's cleaning up. Maybe it's not uh, maybe it's not snow. Just uh, just think about that as you go through uh, the different levels and layers as you go through this thing. So, yeah, you've got some snow collected there in the corner. But I do like the staircase here that you've got. Like, you can easily just put the different figures here as they step on up to the top here. And, uh, you know, it's a little small, I think. Just in comparison, like, there was a rail and different things in the actual film. And the doorways are a little small, so... I don't know, maybe that we'll talk about that towards the end, but... I do like the different leaves here that they've got. So some of them's covered in snow, and then you've got some dark green ones inside there you do have this little rat and it's just a regular rat it's not scabbers but you can see there's no printing on the top of the head so yeah fun little inclusion i guess here all right and then as you come on down here down to the steps you can see there's this spider attached to the side of the wall and then this is really fun so here we've got a box of uh, food for the owls elopes which is a premium owl treat which is a lot of fun you've got this little uh, I guess spot for them to, little house for them to go inside. You've got a little water dish, I'm assuming. And then this is so cute. This here 
is a little baby owl. This is such a cool color there. I love the eyes. I'm glad that that piece from Marvel Series 2 is getting use here in Harry Potter. It makes so much sense. We've got a couple of other leaves there. Uh, nothing hidden in the back there. Don't worry. You're, you're not missing anything. I can shine the light. You can see there's nothing. But coming up to the next floor again, we talked about this little balcony section here. And you can see on the inside, you've got this statue build for the owl. I think this is pretty cool just to get that in tan without any printing on it. My only complaint is the transparent stand there. I, that's kind of noticeable to me. I just wish that Lego would just go recolor that piece and everything because... We're slowly starting to get in blacks and grays and different things. And it just adds so much, I think, when it's actually in that color instead of having to rely on a transparent piece. But still, I like that statue as you walk in. Thought we'd tackle these two floors at the same time since they're pretty similar. You could see you've got these arches there and with a bunch of snow all collected there. You've also got a little letter there as well as there is a letter up here on this level too. I think that it would have been nice to maybe get a different color letter. There are some tan ones available just because I, I think it sort of blends in with the snow. But uh, I like the tooth pieces there. That's pretty cool. You could also see that the owls can sort of come and go through these archways, which I think is really cool. I, I guess maybe that's mainly why, obviously, they're that size is so that the windows can actually have the owls sticking their wings through like you see here with this one owl, which is another really cool owl design. Look at that in dark red. That is awesome. I love that so much. I also like on the other side of those pieces where the, those tooth pieces are, you've got uh, this really cool little brick design, which sort of, you know, it ties together, like even the design from down below. That's pretty nice. I like the little balconies here that you've got. You could see even they've thought about like, oh, if this top part here that would collect snow but it wouldn't hit the bottom level it's kind of fun little detail you do have a dark tan owl and then this is specifically the hedwig owl which is you know we've gotten so many of these before but i think it's important to have here moving up to the top level you could see as we're outside it looks great i love how they have these arch angled pieces like hugging the roof piece here which by the way dark gray roofs are back they did sand green for the anniversary which is also just copper roofs which also works so i like the dark gray ones personally because the i'm nostalgic for the 2018 stuff so this is really great i love it a lot even these pieces here this the handle piece is being used in tan it's a really cool attention to detail if you go back and watch the film like that's that looks great uh, and again this archway looks cool i love uh, the different slope pieces and and cone pieces there at the top all in white but coming around here to the back, you could see we've got uh, this little owl. So again, you've got a total of five owls in this set, which is pretty crazy. It, it makes sense. It's the owlry. So why shouldn't they be here? And then you've also got a couple of lamps there too. But up above, this is something I'm so excited about. This is a brand new collectible thing here for this series. This is a new Nexo Knight Shield piece, and there's actually 14 of them to collect. You could see them all here on screen. And the one that I got is this knight with a mustache. Looks really fun. I'm not sure, and again, I asked this in the reveal video, so comment down below. I don't think that they all are necessarily something from Harry Potter lore. I think that some of them are just Lego designs. Potterheads, please help me out. And here is Harry Potter. And this is actually a brand new outfit for him. And I really love it. I look at this and I'm like, oh, this is going to be perfect for people making sig figs. You know, like if this was a dark red jacket, I'd be freaking out right now. But looks cool. Actually, speaking of dark red, there's a little bit of a shirt underneath there. Uh, he's got his ugly, messy hair from that film. And then you've also got, uh, as you can spin it around, you can see he's got this uh, upset expression on the other side when he gets shot down, I guess, from Cho. And here is Cho Chang. And again, really cool outfit for her new minifigure. I love the skirt that she's got. And that's great to be getting in sand blue. As well as the scarf in dark blue. Navy. Awesome. But removing the scarf, you get a better look there at the torso, which looks pretty great. She's got a hood on the back. As well as this sort of concerned expression. Or maybe that's the expression that she's sad because she has she's, she's turning down Harry for the ball. And last up here is poor Filch. Uh, this is not a new figure. It is a downgrade, actually. The other version had leg printing from Dumbledore's office, but it's the same outfit, same face and hair, or lack thereof. 
and you can see the back torso printing. You've got some scuffs and different markings there. And removing that headpiece, you can see he's got this smirk there, and he does come with a brush to uh, clean up the grounds. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my review of the Hogwarts Castle Owlry. I think that this is a fun set. I think the location is very important to be getting here. The thing that I'm a little disappointed by is the size. I think that this could have and should have maybe been bigger. Uh, doorways, different things like that, and the staircase. While it's cool with all those different studs for you to attach figures, I think that it just needed to be a little bit larger. Especially since they're advertising this is going to be the most detailed Hogwarts castle uh, on the side of the box and in the instructions. I think that this might be a bit of a letdown, uh, at least in my mind when I'm imagining what this big Hogwarts new system can be, but only time will tell with the summer. 76432, this is the Forbidden Forest Magical Creature Set. It's going to be retailing for $29.99 USD or $39.99 Canadian, and it is a pretty small set, but there's a lot of different uh, creatures and animals and different things inside of the set here. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's take a closer look at the set. Anyways, here's everything all built up together. So here's the forest on its own. And I think color wise, I really like it. I think that just the different, there's glow in the dark elements, of course, but the dark blues with the purple leaves and everything, little bits of dark green throughout it, the light blues and all of the pearlescent little transparent pieces really make this pop color wise. I think that's pretty cool. You can see here the glow in the dark elements with all the different mushrooms and the spider. But I just want to zoom in here just to give you a little bit of a better look here at the glow in the dark elements. And here's it with the lights back on. Um, I do like just some of the mushrooms and this cobweb. Getting it in this color is really interesting there. You have a little bit of water here, which I think is interesting with the little uh, bubbles representing that. And you do have a bunch of these studs showing even over here. So you could take like the bat off of the tree. You want to come and put it over there. Maybe you want to take the Thestral and have it, you know, at the water there. You could do that too. There's a bunch of different spots all around that. So I appreciate that. And then you've got, again, those purple leaves look nice and one mushroom over here. I think maybe this could have used some other plants or different things. I don't know, uh, maybe some more leaves just on the floor scattered around, I think to make like this piece pop and this piece over here. Over here in the back, you do have a turkey leg piece there. So Buckbeak could eat that. Or if you want to as well, what you do is you can remove it and give it to one of the figures to hold. And then over here, you've got this hole in the ground, which is kind of interesting underneath the tree. So you could take the Cornish Pixie it's a tight squeeze, but you could definitely fit them inside there. I think the design of the trees are very interesting. Using uh, this piece here to have a bunch of branches coming out, I think is a really cool and unique choice, even just the shaping that that creates here. But again, the color scheme for this, I really like the leaves and all of the sparkles in it. Uh, the two builds are very similar, except uh, obviously the builds down below allows one tree to be a little bit taller, but yeah, I, I think that that's great. You can really angle this and turn all of the branches different ways, however you want it. Oh, also we've got the superhero stand piece in dark blue uh, being used there to angle the middle little branch. I just really like all the cool colors here. Temperature wise is what I'm referring to there. You might've noticed actually on the back of the box, the way that you can actually customize this is you turn this around and you can bend it like this. So you can sort of make your own little forest like that. And if you want to, again, bend all the leaves around so that they're facing that way, maybe you want to pop this branch off from over here on the tree, bring it over here to fill on the inside there. So there's a lot of customization that you have with this. Of course, as well, what you can do is you could separate each of these individual parts here and just mix and match. Um, I guess you could put the trees next to each other. Uh, they're a bit too close, but you'd have to play around with the branches. And then, you know, maybe you wanna have the water off to the side. And then you've got uh, over here, all the mushrooms sort of going towards the back over there and pose it however you want to display your forbidden forest get multiple of this set here's a baby thestral i think that it's a really cool inclusion here for the set. Uh, it did appear in one other set so i'm glad that it's back to have a second one is really awesome you could see just uh, the detail here underneath there as well really awesome piece 
And here is the Cornish Pixie, and this is so cool. I love getting these. The glittery transparent blue is just so awesome. I love the expression there with the little smirk. Also on the side, the little hands, they're actually able to be held by other minifigures and different things there too. So you could capture the Cornish Pixies. And here is Buckbeak, really cool like design for Buckbeak. I think that this version is so much better than the original one that we got. And uh, I love the head, how it can bend up and down, the claws in the front, the printing for the eyes are just, ooh, look at that. So cool with all the feathers. The silver wings look great there as well. And then you could also take the figures, of course, and sit them on the two studs showing there. And then you could also, that wing keeps popping off. But anyways, you can detach the whole center there and you've got uh, just, that's Buckbeak on his own there. The only thing I'll say is with the figures, at least because they are using the short legs, it's them in the earlier years versus we first see Buckbeak in the Prisoner of Azkaban, giving us a different color hippogriff would have been so cool. Sort of like what they do with Jurassic, you know, whenever they're doing new sets, they're like, well, here's that same dinosaur mold, but a brand new exclusive color. That would have been perfect, I think, for this set. All right, taking a look at the figures here, you get Ron Weasley included in his regular Gryffindor robes. The face and everything, it's not new. The scared expression we've gotten all before. And then you can see here on the back, he's got this smiling expression. But he does come with a lantern here. And on the inside of that lantern is a glow-in-the-dark cylinder piece so that the lantern can also glow in the forest. And here is Hermione, and she also has her scared expression and same Gryffindor robes and everything that we've been getting before. But uh, if I remove the hair here, you could see the face a little bit better, the torso a bit better, and then she's got this smirk on the other side. What's cool about this figure is that she's actually got this little skirt piece there, and that's a piece from Trolls, but it's in black. And then she's got uh, the molded legs there, the triple molded legs, which looks so great with the dark gray in between the black. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my review of the Forbidden Forest Magical Creature set. I, I think that it is a lot of fun. It's sort of like a little battle pack for these different magical creatures. But just to piggyback off of what I just said about Buckbeak, it actually really reminds me of Hogwarts Legacy. Just the idea of going into the forest, collecting all these different magical creatures. And I think this would have been a great opportunity to give us a Hogwarts Legacy set. If, if you didn't know, it actually is the game from 2023 that sold the most copies out of anything, which is insane with the other games that came out last year. So the fact that LEGO is missing out on not doing sets for that is so sad, and I think this would have been a perfect opportunity to do that. Recolor Buckbeak there, and uh, yeah, I, I think that just overall though, it's fun. Nothing too exciting if you already have all these creatures and different things, but I'm excited for maybe getting more Forbidden Forest sets. We're actually going to be looking at combining a bunch of different sets here from the March 1st wave of Harry Potter sets. And there's actually a lot of combinations of different things that I never really put together or thought of. What you do is it's very easy. You just grab the poly bag and you connect it, snap it into place there. And if you saw the review of the Forbidden Forest, you could really angle this a bunch of different ways, make it a zigzag. And now that you've got this extra spot there, you can really shape this uh, a bunch of different ways. Now, what's cool about this is I like to think that if you get multiple of this little poly bag here, of course, you could take your Draco figure and the spider. What's great is if you get multiple of the poly bag, you can really expand out your Forbidden Forest set as well as you're going to get more spiders which speaking of there's a rumor of a summer set actually coming which i assume there's going to be some sort of cave and plant build that'll be able to connect to this or at least i hope so but there is one more thing i want to show you with the forbidden fort i realized that you can actually take the flying fort anglia and you can i'm just going to remove this one mushroom you could have the car actually sort of crash landing in uh, to the forest to scare off the spiders. Now, again, I feel like that's going to be more helpful maybe later in the year with that, that set that I was just talking about. All right, so I want to see, can you fit Fang when obviously the car comes to rescue them? So detaching the top part here, I can take Ron, put him there, close it on up. And then here, I guess if I have the door open, he can sort of fit like that. You know, look at that. Fits pretty well, I guess. Obviously, Harry won't be able to fit inside, but you could fit Fang like that. I did find another way, and it was putting the legs up from above and the head down like that and closing it on up. So, looks pretty good, I think, from the front there, too, if it focuses on the 
the window screen, but uh, yeah, he fits technically. So now we showed this in the other review, but you are actually able to connect and combine Hagrid's hut with the Forbidden Forest very easily. And you can just detach the front bits here. Uh, either side is able to be removed, this little pumpkins patch and then this uh, log for Draco to stand on. But you can then connect it to the Forbidden Forest here. Then you can sort of have it bending different ways, of course. And unfortunately, you can't like combine or connect these together. I think that would have been cool so that you can connect them and have that going out a little bit more. Have the Forbidden Forest in the back there. And I think I said that in the original video, I kind of wish that there were some hinges here in the back just because I think that would look better being able to connect it into the back part since the Forbidden Forest is behind the hut, especially when you've got this here as well that you want to display in to the side of the building. Honestly, though, here's where things get really crazy. This is probably what surprised me the most when I was, like, filming this video. It hit me. In the back of the boathouse, we have these clips. And these clips are on the exact same level that the other clips and little extensions are on. So if you want, you could snap that together and connect it, which I think is kind of interesting. You're not obviously supposed to do that. It doesn't make sense for the Forbidden Forest to be right behind the boathouse. But you can technically do that. And I know that myself and a lot of other people are hoping that this is going to be able to connect to uh, the Great Hall and just snap into place, lock it in. So you can't really customize it. It's going to be like a position thing. The boathouse connects exactly to the Great Hall perfectly. But we'll have to wait and see how well that does connect later on in the summer. Again, we're waiting for more stuff from the summer. But I think that's awesome that they are having this new system that you can connect things and of course, what that means is that you're actually able to connect four sets from this wave and combine them all together, like snapping them, actually linking them together, throwing the Ford Anglia. And I think that this is just such an awesome and unexpected surprise here. So unfortunately, though, there is one other set here, minifigure scale wise, the Owlry that you are not able to connect. It would have been really nice if they just put some hinges here in the back. I know that even with Hagrid's Hut, it was a last minute inclusion, the designer said on the brick set interview. But like, because it is in sort of off on its own, it would have been nice to be able to connect it to the rest of the other sets by having those hinges in the back so that you could take the Owlry, connect it to the forest, and then that's sort of, again, tying this whole wave a little bit more together. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is combining a bunch of the March 1st, 2024 Harry Potter sets. I just am surprised by how much you could actually do. Like, when I found out I could do the boathouse, and then I was like, wait a second, the flying Ford, it saves them in the forest from all the spiders. And we've got spiders across the different sets, which is how, you know, I stole a spider from the Owlry. I took Filch from the Owlry here, too, and had him preparing the boathouse, you know, for everyone's arrival. I took one of the owls and put it up there, too. So there's quite a lot you can really do with this, you know, mingling a bunch of different characters and figures here. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my review of all of the Winter Harry Potter 2024 sets. Uh, I think that looking at this wave, like here, all together, I, I kind of also place them sort of like you're telling a story. So you're arriving at Hogwarts, you're getting sorted, and then this wave also has sort of like a starter battle pack magical creatures set for the Forbidden Forest, which I've talked about all throughout this video that it's probably going to expand in the summer. I've got a brand new awesome Hagrid's hut. The Owlry is probably the one that's like the most out of place, I would say. But at the same time, this isn't going to connect to the other Hogwarts castle that we're getting in the summer and presumably in years to come. So that's fine getting it now. It's giving us new outfits and characters. The polybag again combines. You've got this set, which is obviously, in my opinion, the worst one of the whole thing. But it's still a starter thing. Like, this is obviously his trunk to go to school and different things. So I guess that could be from any year. And then you've got the car that makes an appearance, you know, and is important. Overall, like, this is a, a great wave, I, I think, in my opinion. Good expansion here, too, for the Brickheads. But what do you think of all of this comment down below what is your favorite set of this wave who's your favorite minifigure do you think that it's a good sort of new launch for harry potter here in 2024 let me know all your thoughts down below but i hope you guys did enjoy this video hope you all have a great day i'll see you all in the next one